Oh my God, you guys. Okay, I wanted to share this week's live weekly portal with you from Patreon. Usually these are only exclusive to Patreon. So, but this week's live weekly portal was so good. And basically what this is, is a live that I do weekly over on Patreon on Monday evenings, where we go over the energies for the week ahead, but also the astrology day by day for the week ahead. And this week's portal was just so fabulous and so important with the current energies right now. Jupiter is about to move out of Pisces. And so this is a big deal. And we discuss a lot of this in this week's live weekly portal that you're about to watch. So I wanted to share this with you guys for free this one time, just so you could get a taste of what this is, but also soak up these really important energies that are happening right now and have a little bit of inspiration, motivation, activation for this week and what's happening. So hopefully you guys vibe with this. Hopefully you like this. If you want to get these every single week plus more, make sure to see the link below to my Patreon. It's super affordable and you can get these every week plus tons more. So if you vibe with it and want more, definitely check that out. But yeah, hopefully this activates the fuck out of you. Let's get into it. What's hell for May 2nd to like May 9th. So in this, uh, in this, if anyone's new here, basically we go over the energies for the week ahead, how you can move through the energies of this week, what to expect. Now, if you want to know about May in general and the vibe for Taurus season and like just so much good activating energy, make sure to go uh, to live weekly portals back and you'll see it because it, it literally like in the title it says something about tourist season or like the vibe for tourist season make sure you watch the beginning of that one because that is like the whole vibe for this whole season it really captures all of it and then also the may astrology video that we did like last week i'm gonna be posting that after we get off here tonight so uh it's finally uploaded i just need to post it it just was a weird time where i was editing and uploading the youtube video for the solar eclipse and so that's why it kind of took a little bit longer than usual so anyways so this week is an interesting week it's a little different uh, than what we've had. We're kind of moving out of this beautiful, otherworldly, dreamy Piscean energy that we've had for a lot of this year. And, you know, Jupiter, Venus are finally kind of moving on this week, um, or at least starting to. And it won't actually happen. Like Jupiter won't actually move out of Pisces till next week. So this is the last week that we have Jupiter and Pisces. So soak it up. <laughs> perfect words too for Jupiter Pisces soak it up while you can if there are quantum leaps that you are wanting to take in your life if you are wanting to manifest the fuck out of dreams if you are wanting to take leaps of faith huge leaps of faith this is the week that will support you to do that this is the last week that will support you to really do that now not to say that there's never going to be that time period again because there is there's other energies that support similar things right but i'm just saying in general like jupiter and pisces has been full of blessings and uh, i have noticed that some people have not felt those blessings as much as others and it has nothing to do with oh some people are just you know like it's it's not religious in the sense of like the good kids and the bad kids or the you know some go to heaven and some don't right like but it is about taking leaps of faith and so if you've been feeling called to more, if you've been feeling like you're ready for more, if you've been feeling like you want more, but you haven't been taking that leap of faith, then that is possibly why you feel stuck. So it really is all about you and your internal world. What's going on internally that's not allowing you to take this leap of faith? And why are you listening and drowning in that instead of actually just trusting, right? And so that's really what it's about. Because there really is like such a split. There's so many people that are expanding and upgrading and growing and like making wild beyond this world miraculous things happen. And there are, then there are other people that are not. And they're like, why is this not happening to me? I don't understand. Uh, and so it really is about that internal shift first. That is the first, 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 first part of any kind of shift is the internal shift, right? Now, at times, sometimes our external reality can cause an internal shift. We can react by internally shifting. 
but it is still that internal shift, right? The external circumstances just trigger that internal shift for us to be able to shift. And so, but we're not, we're more powerful than our external circumstances. So waiting around for something else to dictate how we're going to react or respond to something is absolutely insane. It is saying that my circumstances and the situation I'm in has the power over me, that I'll only change when something else changes first, that I'll only shift or go after my dreams when this thing changes or when that thing is fixed or when that thing is ready. And that is such a disempowered place to be in because at the end of the day, it is saying that that thing or that whatever it is has more power than you do right now. And let's be all the way real, you know, when we really fucking want something in your life, if you look back throughout your life, when you have really truly wanted something, when you have really truly desired something, and I mean truly, like it lit your body up and you just knew that it was going to happen because you were going to make it happen and you made it happen. That's this energy. So you have to get all the way on board. You have to get all the way aligned in your energies and say, this is happening. And then next thing you know, miraculous things start happening. You don't have to worry about the how or the why or the reason or the logic or any of that. It just happens. We are in the realm of Piscean energy still. Not for much longer though. Now remember, Pisces opposite sign is Virgo. What's Virgo ruled by? Mercury. <laughs> what is Mercury and Virgo rule? Practicality, reason, logic, the details, the hows, the schedule. How are we going to get there? What are we going to do when we're there? What's going to happen with this and, and that? Pisces is the complete opposite. It's not, it doesn't need the reason how the, the, the logic, the details, it doesn't need any of that. It's saying I'm jumping because I have faith because something bigger than me is within me and outside of me that will catch me. And because I jump in faith, everything else responds because guess what? I'm connected to everything. So just as if you're not feeling good about yourself and you get and you end up attracting people or being attracted to people or getting in these relationships or with these connections that also don't treat you good, right? Everything mirrors everything back to you. So just as that, when you shift internally, guess what happens externally? Things start to shift. <laughs> Things start to happen and mirror back to you your internal shift right? And this is why, and, and I've even said this recently as well, this is why like when we shift internally, when we go through a major transformation, and even when we go through like a, a major, like when we heal a major wound too, right? We start to change physically. Our look starts to change. Our perception of ourselves start to change. Like literally our body starts to change, and I don't think it's even just our perception. I mean, I guess it could be a perception thing, but even other people will notice it. Like since I've started tapping into my feminine and my goddess, I feel like I look completely different. I feel like my eyes have this like feline cat, like feminine look to them that I like absolutely love. And it's just like so freaking interesting, but I've experienced this massive times when I shift and when like I heal a wound and, and things like that, where your external, your external appearance starts to change, or even you start being attracted to like different styles, different clothing, different vibes, different energies, you know, because when you shift on the inside, everything starts to shift on the outside to mirror that shift on the inside. And the things that are not shifting because you've shifted they either fall away if they're not in alignment with you now, or you change them yourself because you're not the same person anymore. And so this is such a big deal with Jupiter being in Pisces this last week. It really is so important to soak it up as much as possible, to, to 
breathe it all in, to feel it all, to, to leap in faith, to have trust, to literally start planting the seeds to your dream. We're still in this eclipse portal energy. It just happened a couple of days ago. It's not like, oh, it was Saturday. Now it's done. This is a, this was a solar fucking eclipse. It's going to ripple for six months to a year. And really it's also a part of a 18 year cycle with the nodes. So you have time, but you don't have forever basically, right? Like I, because you have plenty of time to make things happen, right? Time is really not necessarily the issue, but that's not an excuse for you to say, uh, tomorrow I'll do that thing that I know I need to do to get to what I want, right? And this is something else that's like come up really like a lot recently, right? Is that we don't shift staying where we're at. We don't shift staying where we are comfortable, but really, are we really comfortable? That's the question. Because if we were really fucking comfortable, then why would we desire a shift, right? Why would we feel like we want more? Why would we feel like I don't like this anymore, but at the same time, not really doing anything about it because at least right now we know where we're at. And like, so if we were to take a leap of faith and shift, that requires the unknown. We're kind of like freaked out by that a little bit, right? But either way, we're, we're not comfortable. So what's the difference then with staying in the discomfort that you feel now versus going after something that you want that would make you feel good? The journey itself would be so liberating and full of so much wisdom And yes, it's a little unknown, but everything's unknown at first, right? And I was just talking about this on my YouTube community page. Um, I posted something last night about, so it was something I had also posted. I posted the like actual quote to my Instagram, but I said something different on my YouTube community page. And it says, your dreams are not too big. Your mind is just too narrow. And this is because the mind can't see how it's going to happen, right? The Virgo shit. It can't see the reasoning behind it or how it's all going to come together, how it all works, right? Virgo wants to take everything apart and see how it all works, right? Pisces is like, I don't care how it works. It's just going to happen because <laughs> I'm jumping. Like, I don't care where I land, right? I'm just jumping into the water. I don't care if it's cold or warm or whatever. I'm just jumping in. It'll be okay. And Virgo's like, well, hold on, let me get my thermometer. You know, like it might be, it might not be quite ready yet. We got to test the chemicals and see like how much water is in here as well. Because what if you land and it's too shallow or not deep enough or, you know, like Virgo needs all the details before it, before it acts, right? Pisces is like, I don't need that. <laughs> not doing that. So what I said was picture that you're on a path. Picture that you're walking down one path, but you no longer want to walk down this path anymore. You want to walk down another path, but you don't see that path in front of you yet. You don't see the fork in the paths just yet, or you don't see a where, somewhere to turn to that path just yet from where you are now. So what most of us do and have been kind of conditioned to do is we stop walking. And we say, oh, I don't see how I'm going to get to where I want to go. So I'm just going to sit here and complain about how miserable this path is to anybody that will hear me. So anybody that passes you, you're like, oh, oh my God, you're here too. Can you believe this? This sucks so bad. And oh, this path is so boring and there's, it's just all dirt. There's no scenery here. And I wish I could just have a path. I wish I could get on a path that had more scenery where it was more beautiful and I would feel more, I would feel better. I would just feel so much better. And I just wish I could get to that path. And people will be like, well, there might be one up ahead. Well, I don't see it. And they're just like, okay, well, I'm going to keep going. Nice meeting you. And they keep walking and you're like, oh, how ignorant they're just going to keep walking and they can't even see the other path. And they're just going to trust that it's somewhere up there. 
And so the next person comes by, oh my God, can you believe this? I'm standing, I've been standing here forever and I can't see the other path that I want to go down. And, oh, and the other person's like, well, you can keep walking. There might be one up ahead. Yeah, there might be. You don't know if there's really one up ahead though. Have you seen it? No, but there might be. And if anyone else has passed you, they haven't came back. So, and you're like, oh, okay, whatever. And so the thing is, is that when we finally say, okay, 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 I'm not getting anywhere staying here. At least I know where I'm at right now, but I'm not comfortable. I want more. And so I'd rather be happy than be right and safe. And so we're finally like, okay, I'm going to take the leap and I'm going to start walking. And like a mile up the path, we find another path. And we're like, yes, oh my God, this path has flowers and scenery and all the things that I wanted. I just had to keep going. I just couldn't see it from where I was at just yet. And the bigger vision is I want to get off this path one day and I want to live somewhere that it, and I want to just settle down somewhere that has everything I need, but I couldn't see it from where I originally was. And if I would have stayed there, ugh, how miserable would that have been if I would have stayed there for so long and not know that just a mile up ahead, there was another path that I could have taken that I couldn't see from where I was at. And so that is this Pisces energy. It's like you jump, you got to, you have to do, you have to act, you have to keep going, you have to jump and just have faith that something will catch you, that something is up ahead and you will figure it out when you get there, <laughs> right? It's not about like, I need to see it before I jump because that's not faith. That's not faith. And the reason you can't see it from where you're at is because the jump is going to get you where you need to go to be able to see it. Because right now, the person that you are right now, where you're at, that can't see the extra path or the other path is not the person that you need to be to get to where you wanna go. And so the journey ends up molding you into the person that you need to be to be a match to that frequency the person that can handle that thing, that desire, that path, that whatever, right? Whatever it is that you want. And so that's what this energy is about. And this week, Venus is moving into Aries. And we talked a lot about that last week too. And in the May astrology, like the May overall astrology for $15 and up members. But so Venus and Pisces, is, or I'm sorry, Venus and Aries, it just moved in, I think today, it may have already been, it may have uh, already been in there, it may have moved in earlier, but Venus and Aries is different because Venus doesn't like to be in Aries. Aries is a little bit more rough, more quick, more, more masculine, more tribal, more instinctual, more fiery. Venus is like feminine, you know, Venus is like, I want to feel good and experience beautiful things and look good while I'm experiencing beautiful things and, you know, uh, discover pleasure with my five senses and, you know, all of these types of things connect and harmonize and vibe and Venus and Aries is not the same Venus, right? Because she's having to mold to this Aries archetype of just go, 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 go. Act first, later. You know, experience pleasure from your instincts, experience pleasure from action. And so we're gonna start feeling a lot more of a fiery Venusian energy. Fieriness and beauty and and, um, you know, uh, 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 even like a feistiness, like, uh, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Saucy. <laughs> it's like feisty and like saucy and like uh, passionate, more intense. So this week is a little more intense in some ways. 
we can still have fun with this energy though, but it may get a little more heated in terms of connections, friendships, relationships. So do be aware of that. There can be a heatedness, but there can also be a, uh, and sometimes there can also be like a lot of flirting and game playing with Venus and Aries as well. Like the chase, you know, Aries is all about the chase. So a lot of like Aries people with like strong Aries placement can sometimes like, like to play those games of like chase and, and so Venus and Aries can sometimes have that effect too. So, so that's going to be an energy this week that we're going to be a new energy this week that we're experiencing this more fiery side of the feminine, this more fiery side of, you know, it's like the, the feminine warrior is going to start coming out. So watch out for that kind of archetype the wild feminine, the, <laughs> you know, the, uh, the more tribal feminine. So, and then we also have this week, the sun conjunct Uranus on Wednesday. So this week can definitely be full of really kind of out of nowhere, random, shocking, surprising things, but also a lot of like downloads and revolutionary vibes and liberation vibes and, you know, freedom and uh, innovation and things like that. Sometimes even rebellion with your honest. And other than that, those are like the, the big things for this week. So we are going to go ahead and pull up the chart. Hopefully the, hopefully that first part resonated with you in some way or helped you get into the vibe of this week and feel a little bit more activated. Uh, I, and also we are doing this a little bit earlier because I have uh, plans with a friend tonight. We're going out to dinner and just celebrating all of the wonderful success that I've had recently. That's been absolutely amazing. So, um, but we will be back to our normal 7.30 p.m. time next week. So just so you know. Okay, so let's share the screen. So starting for Tuesday this week, as you can see, Venus is in Aries, boom, one degree. So she's already, uh, she's already in Aries. <clears throat> uh, let me see actually really quickly if she's in there now, I forget what time she moved in today. So yeah, she's in there already now. So <clears throat> tomorrow we basically have the moon squaring Mars for like the first half of the day. Now, this is exactly what I was just talking about and what you guys have likely, if you've been, if you've been coming to these for a few months now, you've likely already heard me talk about this because we have this transit often, um, or at least we have the transit of the square of Gemini and Pisces often. And so this is exactly what I was just talking about. Moon in Gemini, a Mercury ruled sign. Squaring Mars in Pisces, you know, that's about faith and leaping with faith and, you know, having trust and all of that. And so tomorrow, the first half of the day, there can be kind of this dynamic between trying to figure out the whys, the hows, the, the reasons, the logic, all of it versus having trust. It's like this tomorrow, the first part of the day may require taking an action with Mars and Pisces on your part that requires a lot of trust and faith. It may require jumping into something that the moon and Gemini may not feel comfortable with or may not feel secure about because it doesn't have the reasons, the logic, the hows, the data, the proof that it needs just yet to really make that decision. But either way, it has to be done. And so that's kind of like the first part of tomorrow. Now we also have Jupiter sextiling Pluto. Now this has kind of been something slow that's that's already been building that we likely have already been seeing. And it is just a sextile, so it's not super you know, uh, intense, but nonetheless, it's there. So this can be an extreme expansion of faith an extreme kind of, an, an, an extreme and deep and intense expansion of faith of where, what's possible if we commit ourselves, Pluto and Capricorn, 
if we are able to deeply commit ourselves to our dreams. And so it's bringing in this opportunity to do that. So that is basically Tuesday. So moving on to Wednesday. For Wednesday is when we have the sun conjunct Uranus. Now we're gonna be feeling this. We can already be feeling this today, tomorrow and Wednesday. So do just keep that in mind. This isn't just a one day thing. So sun Uranus, or did I say moon before? I meant sun Uranus. So sun Uranus is, the sun puts a spotlight on things, right? And so a lot of the times what happens is either there can be some wonky energy, there can be a lot of shakiness or a lot of, sometimes anxiety can come through. Those are kind of the more shadow traits of this energy, but there can also be a lot of innovation. We can be feeling highly inspired to be innovative, to do something different, to stand out, to do something original, to do something uh, out of the box or kind of, you know, uh, be different in some way. This is bringing a lot of freedom, revolutionary uh, callings into, into the energy, especially for like Tuesday and Wednesday. This can also bring up, like I said, random surprises, becoming aware of something unexpected or an unexpected situation occurring. Uh, and also just on a larger scale with the sun, um, this can also be something unexpected happening with maybe like a leader or uh, you know, a prominent individual, like a prominent person. Usually it's gonna be like a man or something, like someone masculine, you know, so. Now, while that's happening, it's going to sextile Mars and Pisces. So this is also an opportunity, once again, for us to take a leap of faith in a very eccentric, quirky, weird, different, possibly shocking way, right? And so this is going to be an energy of really leaping and really jumping in. And it possibly even happening by surprise or happening in a way that's like <laughs> just really random and crazy feeling or looking to other people. So that can kind of be the case too. So also on Wednesday, we have the moon at the uh, end of Gemini trining Saturn for probably like the first part of the day. Uh, and the moon is going to square Jupiter. So once again, can you trust, can you have faith, even when you feel more comfortable in the details, even when you feel more comfortable in the mental realm, even when you feel more comfortable with the how and the whys and the, the reason, the reasoning behind something. It's like, you're not getting that this week. It's kind of like, yeah, the moon's moving through Gemini, like, Hey Mars, can you explain this to me? Nope. We just have to do it uh okay <laughs> thanks keep going hey neptune can you explain this to me uh no you just gotta jump oh uh, okay hold on uh, thanks <laughs> hey jupiter can you explain this to me nope you just gotta jump because to jump means to fly and to fly you will then learn why <laughs> like something super you know wise and mystical and the moon's like okay, but why? And Jupiter's like, you first have to jump to understand why. Because through jumping, you are free and you fly. And by doing that, you then will have the moment of clarity, a moment, an epiphany that tells you exactly the reasoning behind why. And you're like, that's not helpful. Can someone please just give me the game plan here? Like what is going on? <laughs> nope, you just gotta jump. You just gotta do it. It's not gonna make sense. There's gonna be a lot of things that do not make sense these next few days. There's gonna be possibly a lot of like, a lot of brain fuckery going on. Possibly some miscommunication, you know? our brains are really trying to wrap around like a lot of vastness, a lot, like we're trying to cover a lot of space here. And it's like, and we're, and we're just not, you know, it's not happening. The mind is just like, I can't do this. Well, really it's not even the mind, it's the emotions, right? 
moon and Gemini. Now Mercury's in Gemini too, but it's not squaring all the things in Pisces. It's kind of doing its own thing over there. But the moon is like, well, I would feel more comfortable if I had the logic and if I had the reasoning and if I had the proof and the data and the why, like, why is this happening and how, and what is this exactly? The who, what, where, when? And that's not going to be there. You're not going to get the details that you want. But the show must go on and you have to you have to trust and you have to take that leap of faith. And it ends up being exactly what you needed. And you're like, oh. And the why eventually comes later. The how eventually comes later. And so then the moon will move into cancer later on Wednesday. Thank goddess. So the moon will move into cancer and then we will be more, even more in the realm of water, of flowing of the feminine. So Wednesday evening, you could notice like a little bit of a shift where you're feeling more, things are feeling more. <laughs> There's a lot more feeling going on. There's a lot more emotion involved. There's a lot more it's like more of a feeling of safety or security or getting your needs met or home, family, things like that. So, so moving on to Thursday. So for Thursday, we have the moon trining Mars and Pisces. So this is when I think you'll start feeling, we'll start feeling a little more comfortable. We won't be so hung up on the whys or the hows or the reasoning or the logic or the data or why it all has to be this way. And I need, I need to understand this. You don't need to understand this. You just need to feel it. That's what these first few days are. I need to wrap my head around this. What is this? I need to understand it. No, you just need to feel it and integrating it. By feeling it, you then understand it. So on Thursday, we have the moon in Cancer trining Mars. And it's like, oh, because I felt it, now it's starting to make sense to me. Now I'm starting to be able to integrate this and become more aware and comfortable with this. So we also have on Thursday, Uh, Venus and Mercury sextiling. So Venus and Mercury will make a little aspect to each other briefly on Thursday. And it can be kind of like an opportunity to, this really kind of looks like an inspirational desire that comes through, or it's like you, it's like a passionate desire that comes through an opportunity for maybe a, a passion to kind of pop into your mind in some way. And that's really it for Thursday. So moving on to Friday. So for Friday, we have the moon in Cancer trining Neptune. <laughs> so expect a lot of dreaminess on Friday, a lot of synchronicities, a lot of otherworldliness, the whole vibe of this like Piscean wonderland that we've been in. Friday is really a day that's going to be like super intuitive, super dreamy, super emotional, yet expansive yet easily integrated. So Friday is a very good day to find comfort and doing really ethereal and mystical things that make you feel inspired, that expand your energy, that make you feel like things are possible. And that's basically it for Friday. Um, Friday is just looks like a really dreamy, mystical, day. And so I would really just take advantage of that if, 
if you end up feeling that energy. So moving on to Saturday. So Saturday and this weekend in general, we don't have many transits happening. So for Saturday, we mainly have the moon moving into Leo. So the energy will shift pretty early on Saturday with the moon moving into Leo basically that morning. And by moving into Leo, it will then sextile Mercury. So once again, it's like a lot of passionate kind of ideas or downloads could be coming in this week. A lot of different desires, a lot of different little like just little inspirations can hit us this week and inspire us to move, inspire us to go for what we want, inspire us to, to follow our passions. And so with the moon and Leo trying or sextiling Mercury and Gemini, it's like, once again, you know, like, yeah, let's, let's create something that we love. Let's do something that we're passionate about all of it. So The moon is also going to be trining Venus, which is still technically kind of sextiling Mercury. It's starting to move on from its sextile. So this is just like <clears throat> really nice. We're finding ways to go after our desires. There's a level of confidence. There's a level of feeling good about ourselves. There's a level of like you know, being able to communicate and express our desires and our needs. So I kind of like this energy on Saturday and that's basically it for Saturday though. And then Sunday we will have the moon squaring Uranus. So the moon will be in Leo squaring Uranus. And so this is where it could get a little tricky. There could be once again, some anxiety or some hangups or some disturbances, it's a good way to put this, within what we need or what we want or how we feel about ourselves. Now, do you remember the sun rules Leo, so, and the moon's also gonna be squaring the sun since the sun's just a couple degrees away from Uranus. So um, we're really gonna be feeling the height, height and peak of this energy, likely the first half of Sunday. Uh, from the time you probably wake up until like, <clears throat> until like 3 PM, I would say it's going to be pretty, it's going to be pretty, we're going to be feeling this. And so there could be like an edgy energy or like a crazy energy or just like a all over the place kind of vibe. There could also be kind of a challenge between being ourselves versus maybe doing something unique or different authenticity and originality, like something like that, where we are kind of put in a position where we have to step outside of our comfort zone or step outside of the box in some, in some way, where there's some kind of surprise or unexpected disturbance that comes up. This also kind of looks like an annoyance as well, like, <laughs> like someone or something just really annoying you or getting on your nerves. So that could be it too. So, and that's it for Sunday. So moving on to Monday. So for Monday, we have the moon. The moon will eventually move out of Leo. Uh, Monday evening, but so for most of the day, it, it'll be in Leo still. And the moon will oppose Saturn. And so at least we don't have moon, Saturn, Uranus, right? Like at least it's doing it at separate times instead of all together. So I don't think this will be like, we've been through this a million times at this point. I don't think this will be as disturbing or as uh, kind of confrontational as we've experienced it before we've been through worse. So with the moon opposing Saturn, there could be a certain level of once again, like, fitting in versus standing out. 
wanting to shine for being us, but maybe feeling somewhat rejected or maybe feeling somewhat like people are just not on our vibe or people are being very pessimistic or serious. And we're, we're trying to have fun and do us and, you know, uh, be creative and other people are just like being very serious and dull and not very supportive in some way. And so this, these are the kinds of energies that we could be feeling on Monday. Now, <clears throat> also, um, Actually, no, never mind. That's it. That won't happen until probably Tuesday. So that's basically it. And then also next week, we have the Mercury retrograde. Jupiter will finally move into Aries next week. And then uh, we will have the total lunar eclipse in Scorpio on the south node. And that is a big deal. So next thing, everything really starts to change. And uh, so it's going to be very, very important to, it's going to be very important to really, whatever comes up this week, work through it. And really whatever comes up within these next couple of weeks, it's going to be very important to work through it. It's going to be very important to make space and to, you know, live the life that you want to fucking live. That's going to make you feel good about yourself. That's going to make you feel like you are in integrity with yourself. That's going to make you feel like good about yourself, you know? And that's really where it all starts. Like, where are you doing things that don't make you feel good about yourself? Where are you not trusting? Where are you not going after what you want? Where are you not going after your desires? Where are you holding yourself back? And that is the difference right now between these two different types of people, the people that are expanding and the people that are stagnant, people that are expanding are no longer holding themselves back. They're believing in each other. They're believing in themselves. They're believing in the possibilities. They're jumping before their circumstances say that it's okay. They're not listening to all the fear and all the what ifs and all the, you know, the, all the, all the stuff, all the insecurities. They're just doing it. And the people that are not, are not listening to themselves. They're listening to the fear. They're holding themselves back. Like the way I described it, um, I made a, a post on my personal Facebook earlier too. And the way that I described it was basically, I'm expanding out of this little imaginary house that I built for myself to keep myself safe. But that little house started becoming uncomfortable because it wasn't what I really wanted. It was just to keep me safe. And so I wanted more. And so I had to break the walls down. I had to grow and move past each wall. I had to grow out of the ceiling, out of the roof. And that's what happens when you start expanding and growing beyond what you had imagined possible or what you had told yourself was possible. So hopefully this inspires you. Ada said, I'm happy we're doing goddess mode through these next few weeks. I feel so much more equipped to step through my days confidently and authentically. It's already happening. Yes, 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 yes. I definitely am too. I like, I'm just so freaking excited for all of you guys in there and how much shifts and how many shifts and how much change you guys have already been experiencing. It's just like blowing my mind. Like I freaking love it. Every time there's a post, like every post is just so like out of this world and just so like amazing to read from you guys. And I'm just so excited. And by the way, um, anybody on here, if you do want to sign up for goddess mode, you can still sign up. We have our first official teaching tomorrow night. We had a welcome class this Saturday that was recorded so you can watch it still and, and keep up. Um, yes, that is the power of feminine energy peaceful, not forceful. I love it. So, uh, it's just been like absolutely fucking amazing. Like I, I literally cannot even, I don't even have the words for it. And the women, you women that are in this are just absolutely fucking perfect. Like the exact women that I was speaking to with this. And so I'm just so fucking happy that, that this is just happening. Like, it's just every day. I'm like, I've, I've been like crying every day because I'm just so fucking grateful for goddess mode and the goddess and the, the, the lessons and the wisdom of the goddess. And also just like 
just everything. I'm just grateful. So fucking grateful in life. Just so in gratitude. And that is such a beautiful place to be. And everyone should, should be able to have that, you know? And so, and that's why I really, um, that's one of the reasons why I created goddess mode. Well, really I channeled goddess mode in the universe and my soul were like, this is what you're doing. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I guess that's what I'm doing then. So, um, but I'm so glad that I have, and if I would have listened to the, I'm not ready yet. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, no one's going to sign up for that. Oh, people, people aren't going to be into that. Or I can't, I don't know if I can, can't, if I can hold all that and if I can handle all that. And like, if I would have listened to all of that, this would have not been possible. I would have not been able to create literally, literally a divine, divine fucking container for women that as soon as they sign up, they begin to start seeing shifts. That is the power of energy. So if I would have listened to all of that, I wouldn't have been able to completely pour my energy into this, to wrap it in my divine energy, to wrap it in my life force energy, to make it such a powerful, fucking potent experience and program. And so anyways, as I was saying, if anybody is still interested in that, you can still sign up the link. Uh, it, it's on my website, tawnymichelleterology.com under programs. And then we also have the creator masterclass, which is happening. Let me get the exact date. Cause I forget it is happening May 7th and May 9th. So this, uh, this coming weekend, and that's going to be super powerful, super magical too. Like, holy shit. Um, that masterclass is like out of this fucking world. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and more and more and more powerful. Like I was reading over the notes and I was like, holy shit, this fucking masterclass dude. Like if you're a creator of any kind, or you just want to tap into your creative force, if you just want to like, whatever it is, whether you're wanting to create content and people and captivate people and create things that turns heads and that, uh, that attracts like the right people to you that want to be a part of what you're creating or buy it or be a customer or a client or whatever, like all of it. Like, seriously, it's, it's going to be so fucking magical. It's going to leave so many people like inspired and empowered and like ready to fucking create shit that like really makes an impact in, in the world. Like, I'm just so, so fucking excited. So anyway, so those are the two things that I have going on right now. If anyone wants to jump in and work with me further and be in my energy and uh, expand beyond their wildest dreams, then that is what I'm doing. And then I also have one-on-one uh, mentorship right now, which you can apply for on my website as well, uh, under the one-on-one, the one-on-one services tab. Uh, if you scroll down on that tab, then you will see where you can apply for that. So anyways, I love you guys. I'm going to get off here and go to, uh, dinner with my friends. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Don't be shy and be afraid to let me know how your week goes. If any of this resonates, I would really, really love to hear about it. And uh, I will see you guys. Oh, oh, also, I'll be posting the May schedule uh, for Patreon probably tonight, but at worst case tomorrow morning. Uh, so you can see all the events and stuff that are happening in May. So it's going to be a fun month. So you don't want to miss out. But I will see you guys soon. I love you. Have a good week and bye.